Hey, welcome back to Pulse Barbecue. I'm Javen Postal, and today at the grill, I'm gonna be cooking up a delicious whole picanha using the Sloan Sear Kettle Grill, and this thing is absolutely delicious. If you've never tried it before, you need to add it to your list for sure. So just like always, I'm gonna put all the show notes as well as the full recipe in the description box below for you. So make sure to click down there to see everything that you need for this cook. Also, if you like what we're doing on this channel, consider subscribing for more great barbecue recipes, tutorials, and reviews. And other than that, let's get into the cook. As I said, welcome back to Pulse Barbecue. I appreciate you being here. Today at the grill, I'm gonna be cooking up this delicious two, two and a half pound picanha or top sirloin cap, or sometimes it's even called uh, culotte. And this is a cut of beef that's very popular in Brazil. And over the years has become even more popular in North America uh, because it is absolutely delicious. You know, for me and my family, this is one of our go-to cuts of beef when it comes to steaks. Uh, Cause in my grocery store, uh, for the longest time, I could not find it. Then uh, all of a sudden I realized that top sirloin cap was the same as picanha and it was a game changer from there. Often in my grocery store, you see them cut into steaks already, but when you can access the full roast like this, it's a lot of fun to cook and will even feed a full family on a budget. And so to get started with this, there's not much I'm actually gonna do. I have some rosemary infused olive oil. If you don't have that, go ahead and just use some regular olive oil and then my barbecue rub. And today I'm gonna be using my uh, Pulse Barbecue Mad Cow Rub, and this is gonna complement the picanha so well. It's got the salt and the pepper and a little bit of spices in there that's just gonna go perfectly for this cut. And so what I'm gonna do to get started with is I'm gonna uh, take my rosemary infused olive oil. I'm just gonna uh, put it on the outside. And this is gonna be a little bit of a binder so I can get more of that barbecue rub to stick to the outside. There we go. And you know, as I mentioned earlier, this cut is often uh, cut into steaks. And if you are gonna do that, uh, I always recommend cutting with the grain uh, so that you're cooking with the grain and then cutting against the grain later on. And you'll notice that there's these three veins on the picanha and this is sort of a guide. Uh, anything before the third vein is not really picanha, but still delicious. And everything after is picanha and tender and beefy and absolutely wonderful. And I always start on that third vein, cutting about an inch and a half thick uh, steaks before I put it onto the grill for reverse sear or front sear. But like I said, today I'm gonna be cooking this whole uh, because it's a lot of fun. It's actually similar to cook like a tri-tip. With that olive oil binder on, Let's go ahead and put that mad cow on. And for this cut today, I'm gonna to be cooking it fat cap up. If you wanna cook it fat cap down, go for it. It's all just preference. Press it down, get the edges. We're gonna to to flip it over. I'm gonna do the same to the top section. All right, there we go. Uh, like I said, there's not much to do to prepare this cook. It's super simple to do. And so with it all seasoned and ready to go, let me show you how I set up the Sloan Sear kettle for today's cook. All right, to set up the kettle today, I filled up the Sloan Sear basket with lump charcoal, and then I got the corner of the basket uh, fully lit before closing the lid and letting our temperature come up to around 250 degrees. All right, like I said, the kettle is set up for cooking around 250 degrees today. And the way I'm gonna be cooking the picanha is fairly simple. I'm gonna place it onto the indirect side of the grill and let the meat come up to temperature slowly. And I'm gonna bring it up to about 120 degrees before I mix those coals around, get them roaring hot uh, so that I can put a final sear onto the outside of the picanha. And so let's get it onto the grill opposite the coals. There we go. And then I'm gonna grab uh, my digital thermometer. Today I'm using uh, my meter. I'm gonna place that right into the center of the picanha. And then last, I got a little bit of hardwood I'm gonna put in, uh, just to add a little bit of smoky flavor. Place that directly over those coals. And then I'm gonna close up that lid. 
And like I said, today I'm cooking around 250 degrees and I'm gonna be bringing the Pecani up to around 120 degrees internal temperature and the meter uh, thermometer is gonna do an incredible job just monitoring the meat as it rises. And then once it reaches that temperature, I'm gonna mix around the coals, get them roaring hot in preparation for the final sear. And during the searing process, it's gonna increase the temperature another about 10 degrees or so. And so if you want it a little more rare, just do the math about 10 degrees less. Um, if you want it more cooked, just again, do that math because it's gonna increase about 10 degrees during the final sear. And so we'll come back when it's time to get ready for the sear. Okay, this picanha has been cooking for about an hour and 15 minutes now and the kettle has been rock steady the entire time around 250 to 260 degrees. Uh, my meter app has just notified me that the internal temperature has reached 120 degrees. And so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna prepare for the final sear. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the grill, I'm gonna mix up the coals and get those roaring hot because that's exactly what we need to get a nice crust and perfect sear on this picanha. So let's take a look first of all. And guys, just look at how incredible that picanha looks. You can see there's a little bit of smoky flavor as well as that fat cap is start to soften and render a little bit. And so the only thing left to do is get those coals roaring hot and ready for the sear. All right, it's only been a couple minutes and these coals are roaring hot. It's the perfect time to begin to sear the outside of the picanha. And the method I'm gonna be using today is called the cold grate technique, which basically means I'm gonna be searing the outside uh, for about 45 to 60 seconds twice, spinning the grate each time. I'm gonna do that three times then on the last flip. I'm just gonna sort of monitor and sort of make a judgment call on how much time that last flip is gonna take. And so let's go ahead and sear the picanha. I'm gonna do one final spin. And then this last one, I'm just gonna let it go for probably about 20 seconds because the fat cap is getting a little bit dark and I don't want to overcook and sort of give a little bit of a, a burning taste to the, to the fat cap. All right, so with our picanha all seared and ready to go, I'm gonna let it rest for about 10 minutes before we come back and we'll get ready for the taste test. Right, this picanha is all done. I did let it rest for about 10 minutes. And let me tell you, the smell and the aroma that's coming off this is phenomenal. You can really pick up uh, that big beefiness as well as those savory aromas from the fat cap and the barbecue rub. I'm telling you, this is gonna be phenomenal. Uh, I did pull out the meter thermometer when it reached 131 degrees after the rest, and so this is gonna be a perfect medium rare. And so with a picanha, typically uh, you often do see it, like I said earlier, uh, cut into steaks uh, with the grain, and then so you, when you're eating it, you're cutting against the grain. With this one, we wanna cut against the grain. This is gonna make it more tender uh, and just really enhance the overall taste of the picanha. So with this one, you'll notice that the grains do run this way. Uh, remember at the beginning, talked about those uh, three veins and so they were this way here and that means the grain is running this way. So I'm gonna be slicing it against the grain this way. And so let's cut into this and just see how it is. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's grab this guy right here and just look at that. It's a perfect medium rare. It's absolutely dripping with juices. There's juices just running all over the cutting board. Okay, I need to go for a taste test. So I'm gonna cut this guy right here. 
here we go. And with Pecani, you do want to keep that fat cap on because there's a ton of extra flavor with it. So you want to try and get uh, a little bit with every single bite, just like what I've done here. And so let's go for the taste test. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's phenomenal. Holy man. I can go for another taste. Okay, I did actually make up a little bit of horseradish mayo, so I'm gonna dip that in there as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a reason why Pecania is so freaking good. You know, every single time I make a Pecania, no matter if it's the steaks or the roast or even smoked like a brisket, it turns out absolutely wonderful. I'm just gonna show you the inside of this. Move that. And look at how perfect this is. It's juicy, it's a perfect medium rare. And you know, if you cook it this way, you can't go wrong. You know, you smoke it, you cook it uh, to 130 degrees, and then you slice it against the grain, and it's gonna be absolutely amazing every time. And similar to a tri-tip, you know, it does have some uh, sections on the corners that are a little bit less thick which means they're gonna be a little bit more cooked and so it really appeals to so many different people um, if they like it more well done medium rare or even rare you can sort of accommodate uh, with a cut like this and so make sure to give it a try and uh, this is one of the best cuts of, of beef that in my opinion and I know you're gonna love it for sure so I'm gonna go ahead have some more of this but I hope you give it a try because I know you're gonna love it Mm. That's incredible. So that's how you make that incredible whole picanha on the charcoal grill. You're going to love it for sure. So I hope you give it a try. Hey, if you want to see more barbecue videos just like this, so make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Also, special thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting this channel every single week. So until next time, keep that fire lit and get cooking.